In today's video, we're gonna talk about the ideal training split, should you use a fat burner or a pre-workout, and what is the best app to track your macros. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com and I'm back to answer more questions. The questions I posted were on my Instagram page on Sunday. I said, hey, if anybody has any questions for me, I really want to try to get through all of them. There's 59 right now and I'm on day three and I think I've only gotten through seven or eight, so it's gonna be tough. But let's continue the process. Let's see how far we can get, right? John Navel asks, in your opinion, what is an ideal weekly training split with the goal in mind to put on muscle while keeping fat as low as possible? Obviously, tweaks will be made towards weak points, but just a general split that you find allows the most training with ample recovery time. In my opinion, the best training routine when you're looking to add muscle, keep body fat low, and keep excitement into your training program is something called power hypertrophy. This is where you're actually doing two different rep ranges in the same week, so you're training a body part multiple times per week. For those that have been training single body part for a long time, you're gonna find you get immediate results. There's a good website, simplyshredded.com has an excellent tutorial, uh, a program that was written by Lane Norton, and there's a video series with Lane and myself that discusses the specifics of power hypertrophy, and uh, I think you'll really get a lot out of that. Mommy Amazing asks, should you eat before a 5 a.m. strength workout? A lot of this comes down to digestibility and how well you handle eating at 5 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. before your workout. Typically, most people are not able to stomach a large meal that early in the morning if they've been sleeping all night. So for those people, what I typically have them do is have their largest carb meal the night before bed. Then when they get up in the morning, on the way to the gym for their strength workout, have a whey shake, maybe a banana, some stuff that's very easy to digest. And if you can't even handle that, then I would suggest 30 to 40 grams of a sugary carb source in some branch chain amino acids and keep some easy to digest sugars like candy on hand for the workout because you wanna make sure that your performance does not suffer when you train that early. And Venu asks, do you recommend MyFitnessPal Premium or MyMacros Plus app for tracking? I've been trying out both and the numbers don't add up equally at the end of the day. This is a no-brainer for me. My Macros Plus is by far and away the best app for tracking macros in my opinion. It's quite simply the only app that was developed by a bodybuilder who used flexible dieting. His name is Jason Lowy and he's still developing the app to the point where he just came out with the Android version. So now you can use My Macros Plus on uh, iPhone and the Android platforms. It's fantastic, it has the barcode scanners, it has a huge food library, it allows you to create whatever type of food frequency you wanna eat. It doesn't suggest things, and this is why I like it the most. It has cool features like, you know, meals that you eat frequently and things that you use all the time, and you can just repeat things, but mostly, it's just developed with the ease of use in mind of a natural bodybuilder who was, at the time, tracking macros, and so Jason made a great product. Bill Elizabeth Gold asks, body recomposition when you're eating at maintenance. What is realistic in terms of time span, muscle gains, etc.? This is a difficult question to ask. Anybody who has actually been training for a period of a year or longer, two years or longer, adding muscle is a very slow process. Adding fat is a very fast process. So if you're looking at weight gain in terms of how much muscle you're adding, then you're probably gonna be sorely disappointed. This is where body composition changes come into play with regards to pictures, um, body fat analysis, if you have access to a good test. But most importantly, it's just being consistent and being confident and having faith in the process. Because typically when you're in the best building phase, you're gonna have a little bit more body fat on you. So you're not gonna necessarily see the visual changes happening all the time, week after week. It's going to literally take months and years and then dieting back down to a lower body fat. All I can say is, from experience, over 20 years of doing this, you just have to have faith that putting in the work day in and day out, getting stronger, doing things you didn't do the year before in the gym, it's going to result in more muscle. And when you're in that area, when you're in that improvement season phase, focus on performance. 
look at your performance and measure it against your previous performance. If you're getting better and getting stronger, you will be adding lean body mass. Lee Amazing asks, fat burner versus pre-workout. I want to lose fat, but I also want a kick-ass workout. Pre-workouts are actually designed as the name would suggest for prior to your working out. The ingredients in pre-workouts prevent fatigue. They allow you to train more, have more focus, right? So if, if you're more interested in losing body fat, I suggest you take a pre-workout prior to training because you're going to have a better workout. That's what the pre-workouts are designed for. So when should we use a fat burner? In my estimation, a fat burner should be used when you reach a point in your fat loss program where you're having a lot of trouble with energy, a lot of trouble with focus, and perhaps some trouble controlling your appetite. Fat burners are designed in such a way that they help with appetite suppression, they help with energy, and most of the appetite suppressants are stimulants by nature. So these products, although they can be used as a pre-workout, don't typically contain the same ingredients that a pre-workout would contain that is designed specifically for enhancing your performance in the gym. So if you wanna use both in the same day, that would be fine. Just be aware of you know, what your caffeine and stimulant tolerance has become. But if you wanna take a fat burner in the morning to get you through the day, have some energy, not be thinking about food, and then take your pre-workout prior to training, or you can swap them. Just be sure you don't take either of them too late so that it interferes with your sleep, okay? And if you guys are looking for either of those products, I have a promotional code for my sponsor, Core Nutritionals. You go to corenutritionals.com, use Paul R20, you get 20% off all their products, including the pre-workout, the Core Fury Extreme, and we also have a non-stimulant based pre-workout, Core Pump, and then we also have the Fat Burner, Core Burn Ultra. So all of those products would fit your needs and uh, you can use my code to get them. Amanda Adams 56 asks, if you have reached your goal weight but still would like to lose some inches off your waistline in order to lean out, should you move your calories to maintenance since goal weight was achieved or keep them in a deficit to help shrink your waistline? So this is a pretty simple one. If you've reached your goal weight but you are not at your goal body composition, you're going to have to get your weight lower. This means you're gonna have to continue to be in a deficit. You also ask about moving your calories to maintenance. I want you to understand that maintenance calories shift. So when you started your fat loss phase, your maintenance calories were at a certain level. As you've dieted and kept your calories lower and your cardio elevated and whatever else you've done, understand that your maintenance calories are no longer where they used to be. Your maintenance calories are now likely adapted to where you are. So if you jump back up to where you started your diet, you will put on body fat. And depending on how long you've been dieting, you could put it on rather quickly if you jump up too much at one time. So yes, you will have to continue to lower your body weight if you want to see body fat loss. So sometimes a goal weight is not the best way to go. This is very, very common amongst bodybuilders and competitors. They say, oh, I want to get to 200 pounds so I can be stage weight. If you diet for a weight, you're often going to be disappointed at your results. You should diet for the physique. Diet for the goal, diet for the look in the mirror, compare yourself to the bodybuilders that you're gonna be competing against, get to that look. My friend Brian Whitaker once famously said, whatever weight you think you're gonna be as a natural bodybuilder, diet down to there, then lose 10 pounds and you should be pretty close. All right guys, that's it for me today. This is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com. I'm gonna keep this going tomorrow. Got a bunch more questions to answer. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these questions today. And uh, let's keep it going. Have a great Wednesday, guys. I appreciate it.